This is America Weekend. I'm Mike Bennett. One of our weekly contributors here on America Weekend is gardening and nature expert Greg Quinn, who's done TV, radio, and written books. He currently owns a current farm, and that's where this week's story takes place. It's all about Thanksgiving and squirrel therapy. I'm Greg Quinn with this week's edition of Notes from the Current Farm. Years ago, we had a dog here on the current farm. She was a kind of half shepherd and half everything else. As with most mutts, she was the perfect family dog, constant companion, great watchdog, and she loved kids, but what she really loved most was chasing squirrels. One early, warm summer morning, when Schaefer was about seven, I heard this terrible barking, squealing, and a high-pitched screaming. I ran out of the kitchen to see her with a squirrel in her mouth. After years of chasing them, she finally caught one. The squirrel was positioned upside down and had a firm bite on Schaefer's cheek. The squirrel was squealing, and Schaefer was yowling, and neither was about to let go. I grabbed her collar and told her to drop it, a command she always obeyed, which she did, but reluctantly. The squirrel immediately let go of her captor's cheek and bolted up the nearest tree, and I watched her sitting on a branch for a little while, and she seemed shaken, but no worse for the experience. Schaefer was fixated on squirrels before that day, but now they were her single devotion. A year later, mid-October, I came downstairs early one morning to make coffee, and Schaefer was lying in a regular spot at the foot of the staircase. I stepped over her and teased her for being a lazy dog, and then I noticed she was breathing heavily. I tried to help her up, but she was completely limp as if paralyzed. The local vet was a friend of mine, so I called him at home even though it was still dark outside. He told me to meet him at his office immediately. My friend quickly confirmed paralysis, but only tests would identify what was going on. So I went home and I stayed by the phone all day. The test results diagnosed botulism poisoning, perhaps from a recently dead bloated mouse or some such. Now botulism kills nerves. My friend told me sometimes the nerves grow back and reconnect and sometimes not. The longest case on record for nerves to grow back in a dog was five weeks. He said if he didn't reconnect by then, they probably wouldn't. The best thing to do would be to try to stimulate her every day. The dining room became an intensive care unit. I moved her legs two or three times a day. She got food from a toothpaste-type tube and water from a turkey baster. And there was lots of massaging and petting and, of course, washing. The five-week window would close just before Thanksgiving, and all of my attempts to motivate her with her favorite toys or bones were met with a blank stare. Since my kids were all coming home from college for Thanksgiving, everything was riding on them to perform magic. We ate Thanksgiving dinner on the floor around the paralyzed dog, hoping the smells and the kids' presence would spark something, but that was not to be. The sad weekend ended with the kids saying their teary goodbye and going back to school. It was the worst Thanksgiving ever. Monday morning, I called the vet. He'd be by in a while. I sat on the floor with her, keeping vigil. Her bedding was near a glass door, which overlooked the outside stairs leading to the yard. And as I stroked her, a squirrel suddenly ran across the steps in front of the door. I saw her eyes widen just a little, and her right paw twitched so slightly that I wasn't sure if I'd imagined it. A couple of minutes passed, and the squirrel ran back, and this time, I was sure. It twitched. I was elated, teary, and a little bit nervous that this was false hopes. I had an idea. I called the vet and told him not to come. I got two squirrel-sized have-a-heart traps. I baited them with peanut butter and nuts, and within an hour, caught one. I moved the cage to the top step and opened the door so that Schaefer was just a few feet away from the wire mesh. The poor squirrel just ran back and forth in the cage, and Schaefer's eyes were wide and alert, and the right paw twitched. Of course, I didn't want to torment the poor squirrel any more than necessary, so after an hour, I let it go. And early the next morning, I set the traps down near the woods, and every day I would catch a squirrel or two and place the cages in front of the now alert and eager patient. By the end of the first week, she was up at her elbows, and although she couldn't hold her head completely straight, she was moving it. The kids would call every night for an update, and the neighbors began coming by to watch her squirrel therapy. The third week in December, we had about eight inches of snow, and as I was shoveling off the steps, Schaefer stood up. She wobbled a bit, but continued standing and staring.
staring down at the newest squirrel bouncing around in the cage. Now, I know this sounds like one of those made-for-TV movies, but when the kids came home for Christmas, she was walking. Schaefer lived for another seven years, and though she never caught another squirrel, she never lost her yearning for them. Right up to her last days when she saw one, her eyes would widen for just a moment, and she was a pup all over again. We laid her to rest here on the current farm, up on the hill, under an oak tree with lots of acorns and lots of squirrels. For more information about the current farm and why currants were outlawed in the U.S., visit currants.com. I'm Greg Quinn. Happy Thanksgiving from the current farm. I'd love to hear your comments. Email me at mikeaw at mikebennettradio.com. That's mikeaw at mikebennettradio.com. Or follow me on Twitter. I'm at mikebennett11. For Greg Quinn, I'm Mike Bennett, and you're listening to America Weekend.